Hello folks, welcome to the Land Tamer stream, and yes, it is a stream, so we are live. Finally, thanks to uh, some repairs on my internet service, I can stream live now. And tonight we're talking about uh, another part of the series, uh, First Timers Impression of Cisco Live. And this is part 8, which is, let me pull this over here, or sorry, part 9, Social Meetups. And speaking of which, that's our wallpaper of the day. This actually is that Cisco had as part of some of its social program at what they call a tweet up, where you can meet and just have your photo taken by a professional photographer with a big group of people who are also socialites, so to speak, I guess, in the Cisco world. And you can see me. I'm over here, and I think uh, Shrapy Interface Brief is over here. Somehow we end up opposite ends. Carlos is here from uh, the Discord, so... So yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. And really, it was it was somewhat about the photo, but it was also a chance for everybody just to meet in one place. And this is the end of the event, and we got to sort of meet some people maybe we hadn't met yet and talk to some people. And afterwards, we went to dinner uh, with a group of folks that were here. So it, it was a great social event. Uh, this course has covered up the Cisco Live letters here. But yeah, we'll continue in it here on this series. By the way, this is this is a little culprit of my internet problems. I'm not going to bore you with all these, but essentially they swapped out everything. Still had too much noise on the line, and then our great uh, tech went the extra mile. And before you know, cutting my service off again, he went and checked and found this underground near where the junction box is. So. He did a great job, replaced this, and now my internet is looking great. I'm all green here on OBS, so that's good. But yeah, the again, this series, this limited vlog series is about those maybe going themselves for the first time to Cisco Live. And this is all about social meetups, and that included one area in the world of solutions called the Social Media Hub. And the Social Media Hub was like, there were some little, is, is it weird? They had some games, they had like... A life-size, almost life-size chess board. Uh, they had sort of a battleship game out there. But it's just for pe people to meet up, have fun, take photos. They had some professional photographers there with different props. You could, you know, take a, make a GIF of yourself um, with different Cisco props. And there were the social media people, like the people working full-time in social media for Cisco Live who were responding to your tweets. So anytime you tweet or even on Instagram, I don't know about Facebook, but if you put the hashtag CLUS, like they would reply or retweet you or whatever. So they had a bank of, you know, I'm thinking interns. Maybe it wasn't just interns, but people just watching the feeds. And anytime CLUS came up, they would try to reply or promote. And they were also posting... That a live feed, um, you know, show or display a big display showing like the latest tweets with the hashtag tweet up. So that was part of the social media hub as well. Um, they're on their game, as I mentioned in previous parts. Cisco is a marketing giant, and they have learned they know how to work the social media uh, applications, and they were doing it. They were all over it. Uh, they had some contests, too, where if you wanted to, of course, they have, there's a Cisco Champions program, which I, I have, I found out later that someone had has nominated me for that program, so I need to find out more about what it is. But it has to do with people, I guess, active in social media that are champions of Cisco products, but uh, unbiased opinions. So you don't necessarily have to, from what I understand the program, you don't have to say what you think they want you to say. You can say whatever you want, but you just have to be active in social media and involved with Cisco somehow. Like for in my case, I'm involved with certification, right? I'm not employed by Cisco. I'm not paid by Cisco in any way. Um, I pay Cisco to take my exams, right? So, but anyway, there's that. There's uh, they had contests where you could be. If you were the most tweeted, you won an award, things like that. So they're definitely encouraging usage of social media uh, via these contests. And it was it was a sight to see, really. Uh, 
I've seen people be very savvy with social media. I've seen companies be very savvy. I've seen companies uh, completely fail at social media. But Cisco, they do a really, really, really good job, I have to say. And there's a lot to learn. Uh, my, my mind this whole time is thinking, you know, part of me doing this channel and, and Twitch and, you know, is, is part of it is marketing, marketing your brand, right? And that's important in this day and age. So I was taking notes. I really was trying to take notes and in that aspect of it and, and social media. So besides the contest, there are a lot of other opportunities. I, I'm making this broad category, social meetups, because it wasn't just Cisco sponsored. Like Network Collective was there in force, and they actually tweeted a couple times, you know, come meet us for lunch. Uh, several members of the Network Collective are going to be here at lunch between this and that time. And uh, show IP interface brief and I took advantage of that. And we went over and met. We had a great conversation. That was a great networking opportunity. Um, and, you know, social meetups are also really just about social ne networking as pure its sense. Using apps or not. This is just about networking socially with uh, peers in the industry and others in the industry that you respect. So there is a lot of opportunity for that. And we're going to talk about that in the wrap up as well. But, you know, that was one, you know, you have these ad hoc sort of meetups that people will announce, come meet us here, come meet us there, uh, stop by our booth. And so there's a lot of opportunity to meet up with people that way socially. And we certainly took advantage of that and benefit from that. Actually, I was wearing my sticker on my badge, Network Collective sticker. And because of that, uh, Yvonne Sharp saw me, and, you know, we were already sitting down at the table. I was sitting next to her. We were talking about Network Collective. We were talking about podcasting, et cetera, and their membership. And she saw my stickers like, guess what? You are going to be the winner today. You get a membership. <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, and, again, it's all about the social meetups and opportunities. They had a area like a small mini studio, and if you registered beforehand, they would allow you to – um, use the studio and do a podcast or do a video with, you know, professional equipment and gear and audio gear, lighting, etc. there by the social media hub. I did not register in time. I attempted to, but they had already closed registration to do things like that. I'm going to jump on that for next year because I would love to broadcast, you know, uh, Dimitri Figal and I did a closing sort of vlog video I would love to do something more like that related to certification, of course, um, at the next Cisco Live. So I'm going to try to get involved in that. Um, I, I have a point here about individual appointments and scavenger hunts. In other words, these are people that you wanted to meet. You know, I've never been to Cisco Live. I've been in the industry a long time. There are certain people, I call them net celebs, um, people who are well known in the community for either being authors, being on podcasts. You know, a lot of names out there, and there were certain people that, of course, in the Land Tamers uh, server that, besides the dinner, I wanted to spend more time with, not just, you know, at the appointed times. But uh, I did have a couple of appointments where I met people, you know, I said, hey, can we meet up for such and such time, have lunch? And that's a great time to do that because everybody's in there in person, Right. A lot of stalwarts of the industry and in the community are, are going to be at Cisco Live. So if there's somebody you really need to meet for a reason or if you want to, you know, I know people who had interviews there. Like some of them, they realized it was an actual interview and some they did not realize it was an actual interview until later. But yeah, job interviews. So there's a lot of opportunities. You know, everybody's there in the flesh. So Business can get done. Business can be done. People can be met. Deals can be struck. Uh, it's just like any other sort of networking event. And that's something that is important, you know, for everyone's career. So some people call that scavenger hunts, like they were taking selfies. There's certain people they wanted to meet and want to get a selfie with, so they were going on these scavenger hunts, which is great because it's your chance to meet people, you know, shake someone's hand or give them a hug that you have, that you've been wanting to meet. You're just now getting to meet. Everyone's so busy, you almost have to do it intentionally. Um, and some of the people I know were doing this had the Imagine Pass or unable to attend the breakout session. So 
probably had a little more time to do that kind of thing, which is great. There are some people I wanted to meet I did not get a chance to meet, and I regret. But there's always next year, right? And there were actually Meet the Author events. So some of the, in the Cisco store, I haven't really showed any photos of that, but of course they had a Cisco store where they had branded T-shirts and, you know, branded everything, coffee cups, um, branded uh, phone protector, you know, phone covers, things like that. Of course, they had a big selection of books, and I almost bought one of Russ White's books. I didn't because I saw later that it was, and someone had talked about me about it to me in the hall. It's like, yeah, you should check it out. Russ's book's on sale there, recent book. I almost bought it, but like I do in any now brick and mortar, not this is really a brick and mortar, but I checked online, and it was cheaper somewhere else. So... I did not buy it there, but a lot of people were buying books, and they had a schedule posted where you can meet the author, and I wish I would have seen it earlier, because otherwise, there's a couple authors I did want to meet that I did not meet otherwise, so anyway, those are all the opportunities to meet up with people and socialize, and it was it was awesome, and again, it's one of the key elements, most important aspects of Cisco Live, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more tomorrow night in the concluding part which is should I intend and how, right? So we'll talk about the value of Cisco Live, what it costs, what I, I recommend, and what I plan to do for San Diego next year. So uh, we also have a giveaway. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that for Monday because I had not really figured out how to do it yet. But I think what we're going to do, I think there is in, there's a Streamlabs plug-in here for Twitch where I can... Uh, basically roll the dice and anyone that is in the chat on monday at 7 p.m we're going to do a giveaway right at the beginning and again the giveaway includes uh there's a the cisco live backpack um there is a the mpls big lego blocks uh there's some other cool stuff yeah this really cool uh phone holder i don't know if you can see that this guy's really cute but uh <laughs> I actually don't really want to give this away, but I, I, I am. Uh, there's some other stuff in there. I want to talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But you need to be a follower of the Twitch channel. And you need to be in chat Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And you need to be over where I can ship it in the United States, right? Um, so that's what we're going to do for the giveaway on Monday. And then for my written progress, just to wrap up this vlog. It's going well. Last night I had no internet. Fortunately, I'd already downloaded this book, thanks to Frost Hammer mentioning it. I was ready to move on from IPv6. And, oh, that's not it. That's something else. Um, yeah, it was the link from yesterday. It's a uh, DMVPN book. And so I started reading about that because that's another area I need to work on. And I had a great discussion today with some folks about, you know, of course, in chat about um, going too deep. It's so hard to strike a balance, especially this is kind of a shocker for me for the written. I feel like I need to go deeper in a lot of subjects, but at the same time, I need to strike a balance and not hang on one particular subject too long. Uh, shoot, I've got, what is it, 28 days before my next scheduled exam. So so anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to be working on some more tonight. And now I'm on the internet. I can actually go look at my notes again and review those and review source material. So there's a couple of great meat chunks here that I've got listed Several things came out today. is really good, or in the last couple of days. Network Collective MPLS Part 2. This is Nick and Russ uh, are discussing some of the technical details of MPLS, which is great. Part 1 was great. Highly recommend this. Are we becoming dinosaurs? I just discovered really subnet zero.info blog. There's some cool stuff on here, people, and I read part of it today. I read this. This is a very wise... Uh, blog entry but he's got some other uh, Jeff McLaughlin uh, he has a section on here tack tales and I just started reading these and I had to pull myself away because my time was getting away from me but I already read like the first six of these and they're they're great so I highly recommend you check out his blog a uh, very reputable writer and uh, person in the industry then a great see less recap blog from uh, you know Show IP Interface Brief, he put, he's been talking about post this blog. He did post it today on his company's website, but it's great. 
a uh, good wrap up. Uh, he talks about some of the sessions he attended, and um, I got some recommendations from him as well. He's the one that told me about the troubleshooting, you know, IPv6 session, which I listened to twice uh, yesterday. It was so good. So yeah, he's got some great recommendation recommendations on there. Definitely recommend you check him out. And that's all we've got, folks. I'm just happy to be back uh, live. I will be, of course, uploading this to YouTube. Thanks again for stopping by. Please follow us here on Twitch if you have not already. And if you have an available sub with your Amazon Prime account, Amazon Prime comes with one free Twitch Prime subscription per month, So, which does expire after 30 days. Hey, dude for him. How you doing? You know, I just now... Okay, you just now posted. All right, so my test is scheduled for July 23rd. And the reasoning for that is because they're changing the evolving technologies is August 30th. So what I wanted to do is give myself, I, I sort of took the amount of time between after Cisco Live, number of days between after Cisco Live and August 30th. And I, I came into the middle, and that's July 23rd, more or less. So that will give me, so if I fail on July 23rd, I still have another opportunity August 29th where I could attempt the exam again. Now, that was my initial plan. That is, of course, depending on how it goes, how I feel in the middle of July. I got set back like the week after Cisco Live was on call. I had very little time to study. There's some other pending things, so I may reschedule this exam and just switch it to August 29th, but I would really love to take it on July 23rd. So, so yeah, that's the plan, my friend. I'll be taking it here to Lando close by and really, really, really want to pass. So thanks so much, dude, for him. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for stopping by the stream and hanging out. I'm glad I can stream again. Um, and I've been watching tonight. Uh, by the way, this is just kind of on a side note, but if you all can think of anything better... I downloaded this app called Bitmeter because I want to get a better baseline of my utilization. And it is PC specific, although you can run the server and you can run this on other PCs on your LAN. And it's pretty cool, I have to say. Um, upload, yeah, has jumped, of course, uh, now that I'm streaming. But this is pretty cool. And I was just thinking during, you know, during the last, uh, it was right after Cisco Live that I started having internet problems. I could get on the internet. I just could not stream. I was getting a lot of drop network frames. I have a very basic uh, home router, so there's not really a lot I can do there. But, and I may talk about this a little more uh, in the future. This is especially important for me because I, I work from home. So, no internet, and it hurts. Uh, <laughs> uh, not only for the streaming and the uploads and studying, and everything else we all do on the internet, but it's my bread and butter. So, but fortunately, uh, they got me back up and running, and uh, we're going to check out this tool, maybe review it later. And it's free, by the way. But uh, thanks, dude, for appreciate it. Thanks, everybody else who stopped by. Please again follow us here on the channel on Twitch. We'll be uploading this to YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please hit that like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe as well. And we shall see you folks back here tomorrow night for the last part in the series of. Uh, a first time timer's impression of Cisco Live at a normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern, if all goes well, here on the Land Tamer stream. Sending you good bits, sending you the power of the Paisley and the packets. Uh, hope your studying is going well and you're labbing, and we'll see you back here soon. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good night.